Canadian Academy of Restorative Dentistry and Prosthodontics is proud to honor one of our founding fathers tonight as we pay tribute to Dr. Emo Rajak. Dr. Dennis Nimchuk sends these thoughts to Emo. Good evening, members and guests of Cardiff. Hello, Emo. I'm sorry for not being with you and all your admirers this special evening, but I have a few words that I would like to say. It has eloquently been said that life is the sum of one's choices. For me, one such choice came in 1974 when I applied to become a member of the Canadian Academy of Prosthodontics. It so happened that this was the year that you, Dr. Emo Rajak, became president of that organization. Lucky me. It was under your guidance that I came to see what it was to be a man who was a consummate professional, a person who one could look up to, dignified, dedicated, industrious, and considerate. I was one of many, many dentists in the long career of yours who was impressed and affected by your person of great character. Your standard became worthy of emulation. There is a very old Latin saying, do it des, which means I give so that you give back. This is the essence of you, the man who is emo. For myself and for many others, we are eternally grateful for knowing you and having been touched by you. Congratulations on being recognized for all your endeavors for the profession of dentistry and especially for Cardip. We all thank you so very, very much. Your colleague and friend, Dennis. All too often in dentistry, we get to know our professional colleagues by their dentistry, and certainly that is important. But behind every professional is a person with a family, diverse talents, and personal traits. Let's look behind the scenes at Emo. He was born on September 10, 1931, in Port Colborne, Ontario, soon after his parents and elder sister Diana emigrated from Poland. His mother, Leocadia, was a seamstress specializing in wedding gowns. She passed away at age 97, a testament to Emo's longevity. His father, Bronislaw, worked at the Inco factory and was stricken with asbestos-related lung cancer, passing away at age 63. His sister lives in California and, like Emo, is still going strong. Although Annie, his beloved wife, and Emo both grew up in Port Colborne, they didn't meet each other in high school. Instead, they met at the Port Colburn tennis courts during the summer between academic university years. Emo was attending the University of Toronto and Annie was at McMaster. They were married April 2nd, 1955, while both were still in university and lived in a tiny apartment in Toronto. They would be blessed with five children, 15 grandchildren, three great children, five stepchildren, and two step-grandchildren. Emo and Annie were married over 60 years. Emo was a man of many talents. An avid collector, he began a stamp collection early in life, and later on created a large aquarium room full of beautiful tropical fish. He also has a wonderful collection of painted plates, Norman Rockwell and many from Poland and Russia among them. Emo loves to write, as all who have read his handwritten, beautiful letters can attest to. Theater is another passion, and he was director of the annual dentistry variety show Dentantics for years. He is a gourmet cook, and all who have dined with him know that he is a connoisseur of fine wines and wine menus. Emo is an enthusiastic sports fan and participant. He played football and basketball in high school and handball for many years. He mentored his son Michael who won three national championships in handball and coached hockey for all three sons when they resided in Burlington. He has always remained a passionate golfer. Who's this? Ball. Is this who's this ball is this? What do you got planned for the second shot, doctor? Just to make it go forward. Ah, there's a strategy. KG. <laughs> we pick it up here as he selects the right instrument. Weapon of destruction. Fine, fine video. Fine, 
Oh, controversial. Goes back to the bag. Highly controversial. <laughs> ah, now he finds the instrument. I think we're going to be treated with this shot after he worked through the selection. Would you please get out of my back <laughs> Well then, <laughs> he's uh, waved the cameras off. So we will get to a respectful distance. Uh oh, you all right? Yeah. Imo has always been proud of his Polish heritage, and he first traveled to Poland when he was 71 years old. He's had several visits since, with the most recent being in June 2019, with 10 family members joining him. His initial academic desire was to be a journalist or complete a degree in English. His dad felt that he should have a more stable career as a professional and he entered his pre-dental year at the University of Toronto. It was not love at first sight, and Emo was initially discouraged. Well into second year, Annie was continuously encouraging him to stick it out, which he did to all of our benefits. Dentistry turned out to be Emo's lifelong passion, augmented by the enthusiasm for a profession he encountered during his first trip in February 1957 to the Chicago Midwinter Meetings. His annual return to meetings there has kept his passion bright. In the words of Dr. Thad Langford, Dr. Imo Rejak embodies the adage that encouragement is the oxygen of the soul. Imo has a kind and gentle way of making a younger colleague feel more than just valued, but also important to the profession. Taking questions and dispensing knowledge and wisdom without judgment about where one is on their own particular learning curve. I know this from experience. He and Anne being certain that I felt welcome as a new Restorative Academy member searching for a place amongst giants like himself. A ready smile, a twinkle in the eye, a firm hand clasp, and a pat on the shoulder have all indeed eased my way in this profession that we all love, and I am assured that he has had such a salutary effect on so many, many more than me. Dr. Rajak has earned any and all accolades that have come his way it made it all look so graceful and effortless along the way. Well done, kind sir. Recollections from Dr. Brian Ullman I'd received calls from Emo at any time and often during the year, asking if I'd ever heard of so-and-so, or if I could recommend a potential speaker for whatever program he was a part of, which seemed to be all the time. Emo knew and respected my mentor, Dr. Bill Pruden. I'd been working with Bill for 13 years when just one month after he stepped down as president of the AARD in 1985, he died unexpectedly. Emo was one of the Academy of members to come down for the funeral service, a gesture I will always appreciate. He thought it would be very fitting if I gave an impromptu eulogy for Bill in front of the members, despite the fact that public speaking in any form terrifies me especially when the subject has emotional content. I said what I'd hoped to say. Emo was so right. It was the right thing to do, and it helped me and others in the room. The year Emo was president of the AARD in 1990, the president's reception was held at the Knickerbocker across from the street from the Drake in Chicago. Emo had two Royal Canadian Mounted Police stand guard at the entrance of the hotel. I still talk about it. Of course, you'll have to ask Terry Donovan how he coerced Emo to leave the hospital last February to meet for dinner. A bit too much wine later, Emo was back in the hospital and missed the Chicago meeting after 61 years. We look forward to seeing you this year, Emo. Emo began his dental career with Don Coburn in Hamilton and went solo with a practice on Main Street then Jackson Street in Hamilton. In the late 70s, he and Annie bought the historical church manse at 51 Herkimer Street. Once renovated, it became their home and Emo's office from 1982 until two years ago. He always sought excellence, even at the early stage of his career. Mentored by many of the leading clinicians of the time, 
Drs. Bill Ross at the University of Toronto, Jerry Hyatt, Nathan Allen Shore, Bob Lee, Ray Garvey, and Miles Markley were amongst the many mentors Ema was blessed to know. It is my pleasure today to be with Dr. Eno Rajak. Eno has been a role model and a mentor for so many of the dentists that I have known over the years. And he has never, ever stopped learning in dentistry. He is a true definition of what a professional is, and I am honored to call him my friend. Good evening. So I'm going through emails one night in the Canadian Jewel of Northwestern Ontario. Lake of the Woods, and notice that Ian Tester has asked for a comment about emo. Well now, this calls for an inspirational spirit. So I pour an ounce, maybe two, light a small fire with, to burn some brush, and as the embers smolder, the aurora borealis lights the northern sky. I glance up and see the North Star, and realize that is our emo. Emo is and has been over the years I've known him, our Academy's North Star. He's a steadfast guiding light, a gentleman of unquestionable and principled values and integrity. His contribution to the success of our Academy is unparalleled, especially with regards to securing speakers for our annual scientific meeting, with the emphasis in Emo's words on scientific. It has truly been an honor to be associated with Emo and to humbly consider him a friend. He truly has been a blessing for our academy. Thank you, Emo. Emo CV, the short version is shown here, can you imagine the longer version, is a testament to his illustrious career. A brief summary of the highlights include attending over 450 dental education courses, presenting over 150 lectures, three briefs to the government on dental issues, numerous academics appointments, particularly at Western and the University of Toronto, director and lecturer for the Hamilton General Dental Internship Program. He's also held numerous offices, including with the Canadian Dental Association, Ontario Dental Association, the Hamilton Academy, the Royal College of Dental Surgeons of Ontario, the Academy of Prosthodontics Canada, the Academy of Prosthodontics Ontario, He's also assumed numerous presidencies, including with the International Dental Study Club, the Canadian Academy of Prosthodontics, the Canadian Academy of Restorative Dentistry, and he was a driving force in the formation of Cardiff. He was president of the American Academy of Restorative Dentistry in 1990, making our Emo the only non-American president ever. And most recently, the American Dental Society of Europe in 2017 had Emo as their president at the age of 85. In addition, he holds numerous fellowships and honorary memberships. I'd like to start by saying hello to Emo and congratulations. This is a very special time for you especially when you're considering the Canadian Academy of Restorative Dentistry and the years that you've been with it. Uh, I met Emo first when I became a member of the Restorative Academy, American Academy of Restorative Dentistry. And Emo's the only foreigner that's ever been president of the American Academy. Uh, although I don't consider Canadians foreigners, I always considered them kind of like brothers and sisters or aunts and uncles or whatever, but I think it's important that uh, you know that uh, Emo was uh, that well respected and that well thought of. I remember the first time I spoke to you, you as a group uh, back in the 70s, I think it was, or maybe early 80s. Yeah, early 80s is when it was. Uh, after I'd finished the lecture, Emo stood up and critiqued my lecture. Now, I've never had that done before but I was amazed at how he went through my whole lecture as if he had an outline he was looking at, but it also convinced me that, uh, Emo, you probably have uh, total recall because you went through every phase of my lecture. Then you also concluded that by saying, you know, we heard you were a nathologist and you've been up here lecturing to us all this time and you never mentioned the word nathology. And I said, no, I prefer to think of myself as someone who teaches the science of occlusion. 
But anyway, I was very impressed with Emo about that. And Emo, I want to congratulate you again. I'm sorry I can't be there. My time is limited anymore as far as travel is concerned. But I want to congratulate you and also tell you that I love you, my friend. Take care. Emo, I wish I could be with you tonight, with you and all of my friends there, but obviously I can't. So this uh, little video is going to have to suffice. As I look at this photo of you and me, I think back many years ago when we first met at the American Academy of Restorative Dentistry in Chicago. I was a, a young member and I knew very few members and certainly none of the senior members who were in the Academy leadership. This is about the time you were president of the Academy. For some reason that I've never really figured out, you made a point to introduce yourself to me and that actually really meant a lot to me as a young member. It was hard in those days to meet the senior members and you uh, of all of them, the ones that sought me out to, to introduce yourself and, and become a friend. You've had all your friends there and you're only able to see those people once a year and yet you gave me some of that valuable time. From that time forward, I felt a special affinity with you. I really never had an opportunity to learn a lot of dentistry from you because I wasn't in your part of the world but you have served more as a life mentor for me. You essentially introduced me to your homeland as a speaker, and you've opened so many doors for me through the years. I know that I'm just another name on a long list of people that love and appreciate you and all that you've done for them and for your profession and for your patients. Obviously, that room is full of those people tonight. I just want you to know that I'm so glad to be on that list of your friends and I want to thank you in front of everybody and certainly to you for your enduring friendship. I always look forward to our lunch together at the Restorative Academy, so I look forward to seeing you next February. I send you congratulations for this wonderful evening. Thanks for your enduring friendship. Winston Churchill famously said, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Emo, you have given all of us so much. We are grateful to have this opportunity to say thank you for the profound influence you have had on so many.